Today I'm going to set up a personal VPN using a fantastic tool called Pi VPN. I'm going to make sure that it's accessible to me at all times by setting up dynamic DNS through noip.com and I'm going to block ads on this network by having an AdGuard DNS server. If you're interested in seeing how I do this, come check it out. Today's project was actually a request in the comments section from one of my previous videos. I think it's a great idea because it's going to allow you to block ads from wherever you are and it's going to extend your home lab as well. The first thing I want to do is create a new virtual machine for me to run all of this off of. So I'm going to clone my template. I'll give it a new VM ID. And I'm just going to call this one Add VPN. I'll make it a full clone. Okay, now that I've got that virtual machine cloned, I've given it a static IP address, I'm ready to carry on. The next thing I want to set up is dynamic DNS. Uh, the reason I want to set this up is because my internet service provider doesn't provide me with a static IP address. So that means my external IP is going to change periodically. This is only going to work for somebody who gets a public IP address from their internet service provider if you are behind carrier grade NAT. Unfortunately, the only option you have is to use an overlay VPN. So you should look into something like zero tier, like tail scale, like Netbird. All three of those are options to give you a VPN connection back home. The dynamic DNS that I'm using today is noip.com. It's a free service. I've also heard of DuckDNS as another free DDNS service. This is only free for one host name. So the first thing I'm going to do is create that host name. They give you several domains that you can use. I'm just going to leave it at Zap2. And then you have to give it a host name of anything that you want. I'm going to give it a random string of characters. So I'm going to switch over to my terminal here. I'm going to use this command, which is going to give me a random string of 18 characters. And the reason I'm doing this is just for the old idiom, security through obscurity. If somebody decides to scan this domain for however many host names they can find, they're unlikely to find this one. So it's less likely to find my home IP address. So I'm going to create host name. And you can see it's been successfully created. Now I need to set up a dynamic update client on my server. The instructions to get it are right here and they work just fine. So I'm going to SSH into my virtual machine and I will copy and paste those commands. Now that I'm SSH'd into my VM, I'm going to copy that tar file. You can see I just downloaded it. We're going to uncompress it with tar xf oops no ip and you can see it uncompressed into a new directory here i'm going to cd into that new directory in here there's a binaries directory i'm going to cd into that inside this binaries directory there are several deb files and you can tell by the name of them that it depends on what kind of system architecture you are running on. Since I'm using an x86 system, I'm going to install the AMD64 version. So to do that, I'm going to run sudo apt install no ip amd64. And that only took a second. The last thing I got to do before I try to enable this service 
is set up some system variables. If you see here under the service file, it's asking for an environment file. And this is what that client is going to need to be able to connect back to the no IP service to update my IP for the host name that I set up earlier. And that's going to be in the Etsy directory. So I'm going to have to use sudo vim Etsy. That was under default. And I believe it was called, oh, yeah, you can see. I'll have to use that path right there. Noip.duck. Noip provides a template for the config file right off their website. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into this file. Now I'm going to need to fill in the values here for the username, the password, and the host name. I already have the host name and I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to paste that right here. And then I have to get a username and password. To get the username and passwords, I need to go to DDNS keys and groups. And you can see there was a DDNS group created when I created that host. I'm going to have to change that now though, because I don't have the DDNS key. So I'm going to edit this group. I'm going to update the group here. I need to modify my DDNS key and then generate a new password since I didn't get the old one. I'm going to click new key. It's going to give me a new username. We'll copy that. I'll switch back to my terminal. I'll paste that username in here. And then I'm going to grab this password and I'm going to paste that in here. So with that done, I'm going to write and quit and that service is now ready to start up. I'm going to switch back to my browser, go to my host names tab and you can see here the last update hasn't been for a few minutes or since I created this host. So when I start the service, I should see this recently updated. So I've switched back to my terminal and I'm going to start that no IP service. sudo system ctl daemon reload sudo system ctl enable now oops no no ip duck dot service now that that's started i'll switch back to my browser i'm going to refresh and it now says it was updated just a minute ago so i know that that service is working and what that service is going to do is it's going to check my external IP address every five minutes. And if it changes, it'll update it here. So if I have any outages in my VPN services because of the wrong IP address, then it shouldn't be any longer than five minutes. Now that I have dynamic DNS running and it's going to automatically update my external IP address to resolve this host name to my home, I'm going to install AdGuard Home. On the AdGuard Home website, they give you very simple instructions as well. If you click how to set up, it brings you to their GitHub page. And on here, it's just one line. I'm just gonna copy this. I'll switch back to my terminal and I will paste that in here. I need to install curl first. And with that, AdGuard Home is running. You can see from this IP address, if we follow that, I'm going to go to my browser. And in here, we've got a few steps just to finish the setup. We'll click Get Started. I'm going to leave all the settings to their default. So it's gonna listen on all interfaces. On port 53 for DNS. 
Now you have to create a username and password. Now it wants you to set up your router so that it will give you network-wide ad blocking coverage. This is a great idea. I'm not going to do that for this setup. And then you're done. Now AdGuard Home is ready to use. I'm going to run PyVPN and this is again a single line installation. I'm going to copy this. I'll switch over to my terminal and I'm going to paste that in here. Now this installer is going to have a few prompts for you to go through. I'm going to click OK to this. PyVPN is a server, so it needs a static IP address to function properly. I'll click OK. So here it's asking us if we want to force IPv6 routing through the IPv4 VPN. I'm going to say yes. It's just informing us that since we're not running this on PyOS, it's not going to set up a static IP, which I already did earlier. And then it's going to ask for a local user that will hold your OpenVPN configurations. I'm going to select my account because that's the only one on here. And it gives you the option to use OpenVPN or WireGuard. I'm going to use WireGuard since it's a faster protocol. And now it asks which port you want it to run on. I'm just going to leave it on the default of 51820. Now here is why I set up the AdGuard Home first. It's asking what you want to use for a DNS server. I'm going to click PyVPN is local DNS. That means that this server is going to run as the DNS server for this VPN. Now here is where that dynamic DNS comes into play. It's asking whether you want to use the public IP address for this system, which is going to be a changing value, or use a DNS entry. So I'm going to use a DNS entry for this one. And the public DNS name is what we set up on no IP. So I'm going to just put that in here. I'll hit OK. Is this correct? Yes. And now it's going to generate server keys for WireGuard. Now it's asking if we want to set up unattended upgrades for security patches. I'm definitely going to say yes to this. And PyVPN is installed. Would you like to reboot? Yes. Now that the virtual machine has rebooted, I've SSH'd back into it, and I'm just gonna list my home directory here. I don't need those files, so I'm just going to remove them. And I'm ready to create a new user for my VPN. To create a new user, I'm just going to use the command pyvpn add. Now it's going to ask for a name for the client. I'm just going to call this one phone. Now if I list my home directory, you can see it created a configs directory with my config file. So I'll just take a look at it. And if I download that config file, that's what I would use to enable my WireGuard connection from a computer. So if I installed WireGuard onto this laptop, I could use that configuration file to call back home. Since I'm using a phone for this example, I'm going to use the QR code option.
Oops, I forgot the hyphen. It's going to ask you which client there is. So if you have several clients, it's going to ask which one it wants to show the, the QR code for. I'm just going to click one. And then on my phone, I've downloaded the WireGuard app. I'm just going to click add, scan from QR code. And if I put that in frame, I'll give this a name. I'll just call this one Home Lab Create Tunnel. And you can see I'm, I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. I'm going to disable that. And now that I'm on my cellular network, I'm just going to connect to this portal. And on this page, you can see I'm still connected to my 5G network but I'm able to access my Open Media Vault server through the private IP address on the address bar. So that's how I'm gonna leave things for today. The way it sits right now, I'm able to block ads from anywhere using my virtual private network, and I'm able to access my entire lab. If there's anything else you'd like to see covered, feel free to comment down below. I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next one.